We ain't fired Caesar yet. Well, child, let's get back to Black and Crow. We're going to catch up on these VH1 shows over the holidays because ain't nothing going to be on. I really don't want them to focus on Alex's OnlyFans all episode. I mean, there's just not enough there for a plot line. Don't nobody want to look at his bird chest? Oh, we open with Caesar and his hussy. So he's upset about closing 125th because he getting put out again. Lord, now they brought a gator for Puma to wrestle with so he don't feel old at 40, but it looks like when he was trying to fight Caesar over that chicken wing. And he got dropped. Like Sissy Smoyagi, who? From his record label. So we're sitting around talking about Alex getting his chocolates from his OnlyFans fans, and then Buck's girlfriend comes in and is just on 10. She's like, let me tell y'all how he's played me and he's unloyal. Heffa, we barely know him, so we don't care about you. Coming in like Kwani. We've done that plot line. Buck is like, we had a brief thing, but that ain't my girl. So she said that Buck said fake funk Flex's wife tummy tuck was whack. Why is he rating her tummy tuck? This sounds like some mess production came up with. She embarrassed Buck, but she also embarrassed herself. I hope fake funk flex don't fall into the phoniness because this is production. How did he show up and embarrass you when he's not claiming you and didn't invite you on the show? So now fake funk flex is mad at Buck. Oh, he broke up her with her a couple of hours ago. So she decides to show up on set. Uh -huh. Production overheard the breakup and decided to invite her. Over with Crystal and Rock at their shop, Rock is playing games, but Crystal's not pleased. Crystal doesn't like him playing games in front of clients. Then why are games there? So Rock tells Crystal about Caesar's ultimato, and she's not pleased. She ain't never happy. Maybe it's that bang. It just gives you a sad, dark outlook on life. So she compares Bay and Puma opening up their shops to them, but... Bay and Puma weren't a part of Black Ink when they started they shit. I remember Art to Ink on 135th and Lennox. Or was it Freddy Doug? I think it was Freddy Doug. Because I used to walk right by there. Oh, so Rock wants to leave all the decisions to Crystal. And Crystal's upset that Rock isn't stepping up. Well, Crystal, you whine and complain so much when it don't go completely your way. It's best to just let you run with it. Because if I try to step up and make a decision, you're going to tell me I'm wrong anyway. So just run it and be happy you're running it. I'm sorry, but Rock and Crystal just ain't going to work. Rock needs to find somebody more easygoing, and Crystal needs a lesbian that can keep her in hand. Because that's what she wants. She wants a strong lesbian. Not a Rob Dixon, but a strong les. She just don't know it yet. Oh, God, now we got Alex meeting with Safari to talk about plotline porn. I mean, when I tell you I don't want to see it, I mean, I don't want to see it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to whiff. He wants to find some sexy ladies to collaborate with, but you're not sexy. It should be another uggo. It should be another praying mantis face person like yourself. A bug's life. A bug's bussy. I do not believe that Safari made anybody's $80,000 in a week. Maybe 80000 total, but the fact you only paying Erica Mena four grand a month means you ain't pulling in no 80 a month. Sorry, that's not how child support works. So Caesar drops by the stove, and Puma fills him in on Buck's pull-up, which really didn't seem to bring much to the episode. So Fake Funk Flex comes in, and he's not going to blow up, and you can tell that Buck is really upset. So Fake Funk says, oh, we good, but he really ain't gonna mess with him no more. Lord. But Puma says, let's get everybody on the good foot with the Puma production outside of work this time. Oh, we're going to have a uh, herbal refreshment day. That makes sense. I mean, y'all never tattoo, so. But Caesar tells Puma 125th is closing because of the landlord. Puma says he thought that black ink would always be a Harlem staple. And as someone who lived in Harlem for years, I feel like nothing is a staple anywhere in New York. Everything changes. That's the only thing that's constant. 
Things will eventually close down and it's, oh, that used to be there. The Copacabana used to be here. This used to be there. And it's, no, it's not there anymore. Everything's changed. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. That's just New York. It's how it's always been. Oh, God, Puma going to let Caesar tattoo his son's name? Why do you want an infection? I mean, Caesar's work is honestly just a step up from Donna's. Black Ink Crew has had more casualties in their cast than any reality show I know. I mean, they will put you off, Black Ink. Oh, but now we have Alex's OnlyFans auditions. He's looking for a Niki girl, freaky and nasty. Or rather, nasty and freaky. Well, she gotta be nasty to be with you. I mean, you was with Donna. Who would give it up to Alex? Who? Not me. And these heifers coming on screen looking like they're running for Donna. But then again, you're with Safari, an authority on skanks. However, Fank Funk Flex is still mad at Buck's loose lips. Oh, but Crystal and Rock have showed up. I guess she's his plus one. And of course, this makes C's feel disrespected. Let's see how you feel when you're fired. So Caesar confronts Crystal and says, well, why haven't I heard from you? Because you're a pig-headed idiot? Because even though your financial situation has improved, I still want to put chapstick on the screen every time I see you. Maybe she's afraid of catching chap. So Caesar tells them they can't focus on both brands. It can only be a black and crew jersey. So now Mealy Mouth Rock shows up and I'm sure he's going to say, I'm going with you, Crystal. And that's exactly what he says. I, I, I already told you, whatever you want to do. So Crystal decides to make the deal with him so they can get her bigger spot and keep their black and crew connection. I feel like he strong-armed him. So Caesar tells everybody that the Harlem shop is closing, so they're all going to work down in Brooklyn. That's a hell of a commute. So now we reminisce about all the parties we had at 125th and the few tattoos we did too. What's a show that I should be watching and reviewing that I haven't gotten to? That's a classic, like the Gilmore Girls. I think they're going to have to buy a space if they want to stay in Harlem, but I don't know what C's is going to do now that he's been booted off the show. Can we get to his firing, please? All right, well, let's get to the next episode. Okay, so we open with Tati trying to get everyone's attention in the shop welcoming the 125th crew down to Brooklyn. So everybody coming to Tati because ain't enough spaces for everybody to tattoo and they all have appointments. Okay, whatever. Tati's like, uh, I'm an apprentice now. Find your own way. Oh, Lord, and Crystal and Rock are back too. Oh, but now Tati's pissed that, that Rock and Crystal get to open up Black Ink Jersey and she hasn't been able to open up her shop yet. Well, one, you don't know how to tattoo, so let's start there. Two, federal charges were looming over you. Let's not forget about that. And three, you give me a Donna T. Well, I just, I don't know if I trust you with my brand. Then again, Caesar can't trust himself with his brand. She wants to open up Black Ink Long Island. I mean, you still can. You're trashy enough for that. And she's also tired of fixing Caesar's messes, like moving everybody to Brooklyn and not having enough space for the artist and the extras. Where's Ted? Tati, I know you ain't asking where Ted is. He's on somebody's couch sitting like the bump on a stump he is. When has Teddy ever come in and saved the day? When has Teddy ever done any work? But now we have fake funk flex and Alex and Rock picking out some fabric for his clothing line. So back at the shop, Puma and Teddy drop by and Tati whines. Tati's like, look, I'm managing and apprenticing. If I ain't getting two checks, at least let me open Black Ink Long Island. Tati's like, so Rock and Crystal get to use the Black Ink name and I don't when they broke the rule? So after she storms off to get a coffee, Puma and Caesar are like, well, girl, this is what you're going to have to do if you want to run your shop. But Caesar is jerking you around. But they want to get a meeting going to take the temperature of the employees. Meanwhile, Caesar's in Atlanta committing animal abuse. 
However, across town, Alex is visiting Bucks, who's trying to work out his sadness and frustration over losing fake funk flex as his friend with some karate. Okay, Buck, but why aren't you asking the question, why did you tell that girl who you didn't want to be with Spider's wife's business? Okay, so now he's saying I never said that. She's just lying. I told you production. Pro-duction. Because they're foul. Foul as Caesar's draws. So we have in our mandatory meeting, but Tati's nowhere to be found. Puma gone wine, Caesar taking credit while me and Puma put the whole meeting together. Child production set up the backyard and y'all sent out a group text. Boy, bye. So at this meeting, Caesar says, I got a few announcements. Rock Crystal and her bang are back in the mix. And I just want to know, are you afraid to show off your big forehead or do you have some acne up there you trying to cover up? Because that bang ain't it. Nicki Minaj has let it go. You should move on too. So Caesar gives them the paperwork, but he lets them know that they're leasing the name from him. So it's not 33, 33, 33. How much is the name lease? See, I knew it was some scheming stuff. Don't sign that without a lawyer present. C's is trying to give you the bum's rush. Now, Rock said reading isn't his strong suit. He should have said legalese isn't his strong suit, but I, I think he probably has a little problem with go dog, go to. However, Puma's not so sure that C should get in business with Crystal and Rock. Wait. So now they gonna renege on Rock and Crystal after they done signed the paperwork and say, nah, we gonna wait. So C says, all right, let's do a trip and a black ink boot camp. So they gonna go to their shop in Orlando, but they're only taking the people they think have potential to run a shop. Well, Caesar, you should stay behind. So Tati won't be going because she didn't make the mandatory meeting. Oh God. So we have a little drunken laboratory drink making event and Puma had to bring Kwani. I'm sick of looking at her dry headed butt. Oh God, so they get to talking about why Tati didn't show up and Kwani says she's trying to find herself. No Kwani, you the only one walking around lost on the show. She just has unrealistic expectations. This heifer got four years probation. I ain't trying to hire her to run nothing. But now we get to talk about Bucks pissing off Funk Flex because he told his business. They thought he was like family, but since he had a loose lip, they gone sank his ship. I mean, that's not a strumpet you share with, I must say. So Puma says, well, I hope that the team building gets everybody back on track. And Kwani actually made sense. When has team building ever worked for the Black Ink franchise? Never. That's when. Never because you're not a team. You're an assortment of losers. A motley crew at best, but not a team. Oh God. So Tati go to meet with Bay. Oh, she ain't meeting with Bay. she meeting with Vanity, the new heifer they shoehorning in from 125th. So she had to take a mental health day since she's been so busy with the shop. So Vanity fills her in that now sees is peeved that she didn't show. So now Tati's mad that she's not getting the recognition she deserves. But honey, when you have prison hanging over your head, don't nobody want a business partner with you? Say, well, I don't think I should be penalized for my personal life. Honey, the government almost penalized you for your personal life. And if you get penalized for your personal life, the business will be penalized. You are a fool, a white privileged fool. All arrive in Florida. So Caesar gives out some suggestion cards and asks everybody what we should improve about the company as well as what we should keep the same. So we riding on golf carts through the neighborhood. Why is this trip higher budget than the Housewives of Potomac? Oh, so we gonna have lunch now that everybody's settled in. Wait, we just found out Rock is toothless too? Rock walking around with a puma? I can't. So we start reading off the little suggestion box papers and the first one is Ted needs to stop making fun of Rock. How about we just get Ted a bra that fits? How about that? I'm sick of him in them medium shirts trying to hold them titties up. Go on and get you a bra, sir. Get you a bra. Oh, but now somebody else complains that Alex is in his close friend so they're seeing pics of the penis. I wouldn't want to see any of his indecent images on Instagram or anywhere else. 
some schlong you just don't want to see. However, Buck's suggestion is, can I please have my friend in the shop back? Can you keep your mouth shut? Fake Funk Flex says, I ain't got shit to say. Funk Flex is still mad. He said, there's no way that Huzzy could have known. You betrayed the trust. Ain't nothing to mend. Oh, but here comes Tati. I gave everything I could to Black Ink. Oh, now Caesar's saying, well, half these people don't want you in the shop. She don't like you, she don't like you, and she don't like you. However, Vanity still told Tati what C says about her at the meeting, so she a little two-faced. So it's the next morning, and Tati's talking with Bay. So Tati's upset that nobody had her back. But like Caesar said, nobody really likes you. Over at the boys' house, Caesar and Fake Funk Flex are comparing tit sizes. Honestly, I don't know who's bigger. We've got a saggy A and a pert B. However, Teddy says that Fake Funk Flex should forgive him because he don't want them to end up like Puma and C's. However, Fake Funk Flex said, look, my wife said she done, so that's it. But everybody goes to meet at Black Ink Orlando for day one of the boot camp. Wait, what? So we breaking down into teams and seized and brought Drea from Chicago and the other heifer that was in New York. So because there are two new girls, Tati gets picked first and she feels so validated and vindicated. It's because they don't know your butt. They haven't followed your felonies. Crystal and Bay get picked next. So all the men's with bravado ain't the ones nobody wants. I can understand that. I wouldn't want to hear fake funk flex or the vagina disappointer on my team. Because if you do an OnlyFans, you still cutting a check for that cooch no matter how you slice it. Buck gets picked last and he ain't got no friend. So they got to do some Legends of the Hidden Temple mystery and collect clues that lead to a puzzle, which is a tattoo. Okay, so the first clue is in the ceiling where Don punched. The second clue is in the register where Walt stole from. I love how they found a way to still embarrass Walt years later. I'm sure they'll bring up Duchess's dry lip next. All oh, the next keys in the bathroom, paying homage to the toilet twat. Oh God, so Treva, one of the producers, is the last clue for team one, which is winning. Team 2 didn't know that Bay jumped out of a cake, so they're still stuck on clue 2. Oh, God, C's is a clue. C's is a clue. So everybody gets to C's for the last clue at the same time. So now we've got the tattoo portion of the challenge, and they have to elevate them. So Bay and Crystal are doing the actual tattoos. They were both chess pieces, all as a representation of Caesar and Donna's little union. Oh, so there's no winner. It was just an exercise. Well, C's, why are you handing out exercises when you're someone who has never exercised? It's the evening after the fake competition, so we going out to celebrate. Tati, you got permission from your parole officer to go, but you can't drink alcohol on the trip. That's why you ain't drinking. But we quickly get to the three faces of Caesar because the new heifer asks, is Caesar always this dramatic? And they say, yeah. You know, sometimes he's nice, sometimes he's angry, and sometimes he's petty. Ask his puppy. But now Tati getting mad that Vanity's getting very mouthy and basically throwing slick shade at her saying, well, you know, all that matters is this week and everyone's not going to make it. Well, girl, Tati's giving us storyline continuously. At least we enjoy watching Tati fall down the stairs of life. We don't know what we want to do with you. So she go outside with Bay to moat. So Bay tells Tati, look, express yourself, but keep it cute. So they go back in to address the group. So she asks, do y'all mess with me or not? Since Caesar said you don't like me. Girl, you could tell the look on Crystal's face, it's a no. So Crystal says, I never said anything about you. It sees that was trying to get you upset. And now you coming at us. Vanity, I, I'm not here for your overacting. Vanity telling Bay to mind her business, then Bay throw a drink. All right, well, next time we'll get to see the skirmish. And I will see you soon.